Good morning, and thank you for being here today. First of all, our hearts go out to the people of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada this morning. Um, just want to make a mention of this tragic uh, current affairs of our country where we've lost over 50 lives and over 200 people injured. And we are here to value life and certainly ask for unity in our country. And I could, it would be remiss if I did not mention uh, the tragic news story we heard this morning uh, with our fellow Americans. Today we are here gathered in St. Paul, Minnesota to lead a national effort that's going on across the country today. At 2 o'clock, uh, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and over 45 organizations with the National Hispanic Leadership Agenda are going to be gathered at the Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. to unite as Americans, unite as Hispanic-led organizations to request the federal government to continue and do more for the relief efforts of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico and in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Caribbean. As you know, uh, there are 3.5 million American citizens in the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and today marks the 12th day of this hurricane devastating the island, literally shredding the infrastructure to its decimating the infrastructure, water and electricity are still uh, lacking in Puerto Rico. And today we, we want to make sure that Americans know and our country does what it has to do to unite efforts with our congressional leaders, with our state leaders, and with our local leaders. So today you'll hear some of those leaders who have stepped up to demand uh, more to be done from our federal government, more to be done from our state government as, as we can and from our local cities. So with that, I will pass it on to Representative Carlos Mariani, who will also uh, include some remarks. Thank you, Senator uh, Franson. Good morning, Carlos Mariani, Minnesota House of Representatives. Thank you for being here today. I will be very brief. Um, Senator France and I are the only Puerto Ricans to serve in the Minnesota legislature. We have family and loved ones on the island, so this is upfront and personal. But even if we didn't, we're Americans and it's upfront and personal. And so we have uh, uh, a number of local elected officials or uh, members of our congressional delegation. I should mention my Congresswoman McCollum. I spoke with Betty this, uh, yesterday. Uh, she can't be here today. Uh, but she is with us and she's working on this issue as you'll hear from the other congressmen as well, as well as from our local elected leaders as, um, here in Minnesota. Uh, we're Minnesotans, we're Americans, and we care. Um, I want to say very quickly that this is a very, very unusual situation. Every hurricane, every damage that we've had in this nation is unique and terrible with a, with a huge cost of life and property and psychology and spirit. And each one merits the responses that we've done as a people to walk with our fellow Americans. We need to do the same thing in Puerto Rico. And we need to understand the incredible, incredible, I cannot overstate the incredible damage that exists on that island right now. As we speak, there are communities in the hills that have been physically isolated since the hurricane. No aid has gotten there since the hurricane. We're talking basic food and water, basic ability to communicate. So there's a lot of good things that are happening on the ground, but we need to step up even bigger. That's gonna require a larger response from the federal government right now, and it's gonna require a big aid package on the part of Congress and the White House in the coming weeks. And so we're going to hear about that today, and I thank you for being here. So I'll call up Congressman Keith Ellison, followed by Congressman Tim Maltz. Well, I just want to thank our leaders uh, for calling us together. Minnesotans should know that uh, Minnesota has a very strong, dynamic uh, community of Puerto Rican descent. Um, we have some uh, serving in our state legislature, like Melissa Franson, Carlos Mariani, uh, but also um, practicing medicine, opening up businesses, serving people in all walks of life. Uh, the fact is that we are tightly connected to Puerto Rico. 
These are our fellow Americans, and we have to step up at this moment urgently. I can tell you that I can pledge my support for the, US, the federal government making a strong congressional response to stick with Puerto Rico in the short term and in the long term. The devastation is so great that it's not going to be fixed overnight. Yet overnight, solutions have to be part of it because time is of the essence. There are whole parts of the island where even relief groups haven't been able to get through yet. And these people need help now. Minutes are urgent. Minutes are important given this stage. You know, over 3.4 million U.S. citizens live in Puerto Rico uh, and, of course, over 100,000 in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's important for us to remember that the U.S. VI is part of this devastation as well. And uh, we, I will say that the, the relief efforts that have been on the ground in Puerto Rico have been awesome. The mayor of San Juan has been a awesome leader. She, there's pictures of her walking through the water to help save Puerto Ricans, and yet uh, she needs more help from her federal government. She doesn't need criticism from our federal government. She needs help from our federal government. And she is putting her body on the line to preserve and protect life, and we expect no less from anyone else. Uh, at this point, there has been uh, a, 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 a suspension of the Jones Act, the Jones Act is an important piece of legislation to protect uh, U.S. Uh, shipping and jobs, but it must be waived temporarily if it is in the way of getting aid to people. The president first said he wasn't going to uh, waive it, as he did waive it for Ver Irma and uh, and um, uh, the, and uh, in the other two hurricanes. But he didn't want to do it on this one. Then he temporarily waived it. He needs to waive it for as long as necessary to protect American jobs. Uh, let me say that uh, right now, um, you know, the mayor, uh, Carmen Yulin Cruz, uh, is, is again leading the fight. We need to follow her excellent example. We need to right now make sure that we can get medicines to Puerto Rico. There are a lot of problems, including water, housing. There's no shortage of things that need to be addressed. But there are people who need refrigerated medicines right away, and we need to do everything we can to get those to Puerto Rico immediately. At the end of the day, Minnesota stands ready to assist our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico. We're very fortunate to have some leaders of Puerto Rican descent who can tell us exactly, through their familial and personal connections, what is going on. We need to listen to them, and we need to get busy right now. The federal government needs to do that. I stand ready to do that. Betty McCullum, and you're going to hear from Tim Walls in a moment, stand ready to do that. We need our president to do that, too. And we want to just say uh, uh, thank you to everybody for being here. We're in for a long fight. I think we're up to it. Uh, the people, Our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico need our help, and we're here to lend it. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Congressman Tim Walls. I'd like to thank members of the media for being here to, uh, to highlight this uh, critical situation with our fellow Americans. And I'm also honored to be standing and, and proud of Minnesota's response of standing for fellow Americans in a, in a tragic situation. You're going to hear from individuals, and you already did. Uh, the, the situation is dire for many of our fellow Americans, and the response and the, the, the timeliness of the response is absolutely critical. And the things that I could ask and what, uh, what the public can know and should do about this is last week, we organized, uh, Congressman Ellison, myself, and 138 other members sent a, a, a letter to the President outlining the things that needed to happen, uh, the, which is important, led by Nadia Velasquez from New York. Um, the problem is only 140 members. We need to make sure that all of our colleagues understand the importance of this, that an aid package must move, it must move immediately, and all barriers to the flow of that aid must be removed as quickly as possible. With that being said, I'm also incredibly proud and thankful, and I hope all of us give a thank you. Uh, we have our uh, 
women and men in uniform from the Minnesota National Guard already serving in this. We're aligning assets, and I was on the phone over the weekend with uh, the Adjutant General's office to make sure that the alignment of the assets that they need, air assets, engineering assets, are lined up. The National Guards have a wonderful opportunity to have state compacts amongst themselves, but what the federal government can do is how they declare and, and the, the specifics they put on this mission means that the state of Minnesota is reimbursed by the federal government and other states that are participating in this. If we can remove those barriers to make sure that the aid and the assets are available to move as quickly as possible, the aid package is passed through the Congress and can move as quickly as possible, the folks that are going to be here and those uh, those governmental and uh, NGOs on the ground will be able to make sure our fellow Americans uh, get the care that they deserve. So I want to thank you all for being here. I especially want to thank the leadership um, uh, of the folks here in Minnesota for highlighting this. We're all in this together. Thank you. The next up, uh, as, as Congressman Klein mentioned, uh, there are, or well, excuse me, there are cer certain um, efforts going on the ground here in Minnesota. I spoke to the governor uh, as late as yesterday after around 10 o'clock at night. We are finding ways where Minnesota can also align with the need in, down on the ground. We, we must not make no mistake, there is a lack of, of activity and, and, and efficiencies at the federal government. So that is why it's critical that at the state level in Minnesota and with any other resources we have at the local level that we activate, that we respond, that we are neighborly, that we are a, a good partner with our friends and, and neighbors in Puerto Rico, regardless of whether there's a body of water between us. Uh, with that, I want to introduce uh, Mayor Chris Coleman, who has also responded to that call to action from his leadership at the city of St. Paul, and followed uh, with uh, Senator uh, Klein, who also is, um, we, we received so many overwhelming response from people all over um, my colleagues here in the legislature and also around all the local nonprofits who are lo looking for ways to help, whether it's monetary or whether it's a, a way of uh, shipping good. So um, you'll hear more from them now. Um, I'll pass it on to uh, Chris Coleman and uh, Senator Klein. Well, thank you so much. First of all, let me add my uh, thoughts and prayers to the uh, folks in Las Vegas uh, and the victims of the tragic uh, shooting last night. Uh, it is just very hard to wake up to, to that kind of news. Uh, just as it was very hard to wake up to the images of what was happening in Puerto Rico uh, just a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, to my friends and uh, my friends here that have friends and family back uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, I wanted to say that uh, I can't even imagine how unbearable it must be to not know how your relatives are doing, to not know uh, whether your family is safe, uh, and, I, and anything that we can do to continue to make sure uh, that the people of Puerto Rico have the resources that they need to be, uh, to be, to be protected. Uh, to have the basic, you know, whether it's diapers or medicine or clean water, uh, whatever it is, we need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to support them. Uh, as a mayor, I have to tell you the images of uh, Mayor Cruz and what she was doing really spoke to my heart. Uh, to see how hard she was struggling, uh, to see that uh, what she knew on the ground that perhaps folks in Washington, D.C. didn't understand, uh, I understood as a mayor what she was dealing with. Uh, you know, a natural disaster becomes a humanitarian crisis when we fail to act with every resource available at our disposal. And that's not what we need to send to the people of Puerto Rico. We need to make sure that they have uh, confidence that we in the United uh, that we here uh, are doing everything that we can to support our fellow United States citizens. On the local level, we have offered to assist where we could. Uh, the governor of Puerto Rico had issued a call for mutual aid. We were prepared to send officers down to Puerto Rico uh, to help in the effort uh, and to, to safeguard uh, the folks that were down on the island. Uh, that has actually been called off at this point as they are kind of adjusting and kind of looking at the, the needs that they really have on the ground. But in St. Paul, in communities across the United States of America, we are prepared to act however we can. Right now, in the absence of sending direct aid, uh, in the form of police officers or other emergency responders. I believe that we should, every one of us, reach into our pockets, reach in uh, to find every resource, every dollar that we can to help and to send it to an aid organization that is working on the island right now to support the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, we are prepared to stand up. We are prepared to do what we can to work in conjunction with our federal delegation to make sure that they, uh, that, uh, they have the support here on the ground. Uh, and I just want to thank the leadership here uh, to, to bringing us 
us together uh, to support the people that are struggling and suffering so much. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I'm Matt Klein. I'm State Senator from District 52, which is West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, Invergrove Heights, and South St. Paul. And I'm grateful to Senator Franzen uh, and Representative Mariani for the opportunity to come out and support them here in our congressional delegation for the very affirmative plans that they plan to bring back today to Washington uh, to provide immediate assistance to our, our friends and neighbors in Puerto Rico. Uh, but I wanted to speak especially uh, because of my outrage, I guess, and uh, dissatisfaction with the messaging we've heard so far uh, as American citizens from the executive branch of our government. And I just don't know that we've seen this before. Americans within our own territory, slowly exterminated by starvation and thirst and darkness descending upon millions within our American family while we sit within reach and do not stand or extend our arms. And I have to say, what does it say of this, our greatest republic, when we allow that to happen? When did we become this weak or this small-hearted? We are not this small. We are not this small-hearted. No matter if our own leaders tell us we are, we know that what made America great and what makes it great today is the goodness of its soul, the ingenuity of its endeavors, and the intensity of its labors for what is right. And so I encourage our leaders at all levels of the executive branch and, and federal government to do what Americans have always done in this situation and help our friends and neighbors in Puerto Rico. Thank you. Good morning. We too, uh, Puerto Rican community, uh, join the uh, people of the United States. Can you hear me okay? I'm not sure I'm getting it. I uh, join the people of the United States in the tragedy of Las Vegas that just occurred. We also want to acknowledge the tragedy of Mexico, who had lost a lot of lives and who lived through, uh, are living through very difficult uh, times. I want to thank uh, the coalition of legislators uh, here that are coming together to uh, help our country go through this crisis. The Puerto Rican people are ready to rebuild their country. Those Puerto Ricans uh, that live here in the United States, the diaspora that we call, we don't like the word diaspora too much. We, we call it the extended homeland. La patria extendida. We are very uh, affected by uh, the occurrence in our country. I was there during the hurricane. Uh, we're very frightened in moments, but the most frightening moments happened when I worked in the shelter uh, and I saw people's homes totally blown away. Uh, a father came in uh, crying that he was having a heart attack because his daughter's uh, respirator, she has sleep apnea, had been blown away. I saw people come in, no medications, no insulin. We had nothing to give them at that time. So I saw it directly, uh, the wounds of this terrible tragedy that's taking our country. And I want people in the United States to know, and the wonderful people of Minnesota, that the Puerto Rican people will rise at this occasion. There's a saying, Puerto Rico se levanta. Puerto Rico will rise. There be no questions that the Puerto Rican nation has historically met adversity with great courage and pride and will overcome this terrible crisis. As a physician, my biggest concern is epidemics in the island. And I already heard from colleagues in the medical field that there are epidemics starting. There's uh, scabies, conjunctivitis, and other transmissible diseases. I'm at the University of Minnesota, a uh, physician, and we have already started a, uh, a relief group to look at medications. We have prioritized two centers in Puerto Rico which are direct connections. We speak with them and they're running short on antibiotics, anticonvulsants, anticoagulant, anti-asthma medications. So I plead to the pharmaceutical companies who may be listening to please uh, get in contact uh, with us to help with the medical uh, side of things which uh, medication is a major priority. Uh, other items can um, be later brought in. I want to bring up uh, um, 
a suggestion to this uh, coalition of legislators. Uh, number one, I think that the only good thing that's happened with Hurricane Maria is the demise of the Jones Act. And as uh, Representative Ellison alluded to it, it has tied our country uh, in a colonial type of uh, situation uh, where we cannot reach out to the world. And in a moment of crisis like this, uh, the president has temporarily for 10 days, which is too short a time. But I think this uh, Jones Act has to completely go because it has been a cloud over our heads for a long time. I also want to say that the issue of Puerto Rico can now become a, a, a political football uh, between parties. Uh, when the moment comes like this, uh, parties will come second. And certainly, we don't want that to intensify with the visit of President Trump to Puerto Rico. President Trump has said that in reference to the Puerto Rico, something has been very offensive to a lot of us. He says they want us to do everything for them. And I'm sorry, Mr. President, I take exception for that. Right here in this corner of the world, we're all standing up, Puerto Ricans and Americans, Minnesota, hand in hand, and there is not them. It's all of us together. <laughs> My final word is I encourage this coalition of legislators uh, to join together with uh, the other side of the bench and establish a commission of relief and rehabilitation for Puerto Rico. The issues are much deeper. Puerto Rico has an economic crisis, a political crisis, and these issues need to be addressed at some point after we're taking care of the humanitarian crisis. Thank you very much. Miguel Fiol. M I G U E L F I O L. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Javier Morillo, J-A-V-I-E-R-M-O-R-I-L-L-O. I am president of SEIU Local 26, and I grew up in Puerto Rico. My parents are there now. I am terrified for uh, my island, as we all are. Um, uh, a life preserver is not a handout. That se it seems astounding to me that in the, in the aftermath of a hurricane, one should have to clarify such a thing. But after this weekend, when we saw the President of the United States basically say that Puerto Ricans want everything done for them, uh, I just want to say to Minnesotans and to Americans that that is wrong on at least three counts. One, Puerto Ricans are right now helping themselves because they have to. My parents' neighbors are helping each other out. All of us have stories in towns across the island. People are helping each other out in the absence of federal help. It is also wrong because the assistance that has gone to the island has not been enough. And you don't have to take the word of the mayor of San Juan. You don't have to take my word. General Jeffrey Buchanan, the three-star general, who's been assigned to Puerto Rico is there. He said, we do not have enough troops. He uh, uh, toured the island and said it's the worst devastation he has ever seen. The uh, FEMA administrator said uh, this weekend that this is, uh, Puerto Rico is the most logistically challenging event the US has ever seen. Puerto Rico is an island that is 100 miles by 35 miles long. I find it unfathomable that there would not have been a plan in place and that we can say that a country that has engaged in wars across the world, that this would be the most challenging logistically event ever in this country is astounding to me. And finally, I think what the president said is so wrong because it depends on this idea that Puerto Ricans are somehow different than Americans asking Americans to help them. My father in Puerto Rico, in Bayamón, Puerto Rico right now, is a veteran of the United States Army. My father fought in the Vietnam War, two tours of duty, front lines. He served this country, as have many Puerto Ricans, in every war since World War I. 
We are not asking for handouts. A life preserver is not a handout. The least we can do for the American citizens of Puerto Rico is to provide the help that is needed. Thank you. Amen. Buenos dias a todos. My name is Henry Jimenez. I'm the executive director of the Minnesota Council on Latino Affairs. I want to start off by giving my thoughts and prayers to my hometown of Las Vegas. Um, I'm lucky to have my family safe, but I know that there's over 50 families that won't have the same luck. Uh, dear community, our hearts are heavy with the impacts that recent catastrophes are having on our families, friends, and communities in Mexico, Puerto Rico, and among others. The Latino population in Minnesota is about 6%, with over 12,000 of them identifying as Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans are not only an integral part of the Latino community in Minnesota, they're an integral part of Minnesota. MCLA supports a collective drive of Minnesotans to remain strong and support relief efforts in, which way you, in whichever way you can. Along these are difficult times and many of us might feel powerless, but our community has never been closer and stronger than ever before. As Latinos in Minnesota, as Minnesotanos, as Minnesotans, we know the value of depending on our extended familias and the trust that each we will reach out and come together in this time of need. MCLA has received calls and information regarding relief and assist, assistant efforts and will do our best to connect individuals with organizations that are doing great work to support the people of Puerto Rico. Our team will work diligently to share information on the different initiatives through social media, which is the most effective way for us to broaden public base. If you know of local efforts, please forward that information to MCLA at statemn.us or call us at 651-592-7974 and we will share it. Minnesotans are caring and compassionate. Let us at this time love each other and check with one of each other. Provide words of encouragement and help our friends and families during this time. MCLA and our board will continue to track new developments at this time and keep the community informed. One last thing in closing. The way that we will come back and support our neighbors in Nevada, the way we would do it if it was Wisconsin, Iowa, or the Dakotas, is the way that we need to come back for Puerto Rico and anybody else. Thank you, Henry. As I mentioned earlier, I had spoken with Congresswoman McCollum yesterday, and so I'd like to ask her aide, Jamal Lundy, to come forward and say a few words from uh, the Congresswoman's office. I have a short letter from the Congresswoman. Um, unfortunately, she was unable to make it today. Um, dear friends, I'd like to thank Senator Franzen and Representative Carlos Mariani for organizing this event. And I regret that I'm unable to attend here today. Um, the people of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands are our American brothers and sisters, not second-class citizens. The Trump administration, the Pentagon, and Congress have much more work to do to ensure that our fellow Americans get critically needed short-term emergency relief and long-term assistance in rebuilding the island. As a member of the Appropriations Committee on Defense, I have been monitoring the unfolding crisis with, with deep concern. I want to share with you today a few of the immediate actions the Pentagon is taking to assist in the relief efforts. The U.S. Navy hospital ship USNS Comfort departed for Puerto Rico on Friday to assist with emergency medical services, bringing with it a complement of 1,000 patient beds. The USS Wasp and the USS Cursage, Cursage are currently on station off Puerto Rico. Each ship possesses the capability to provide up to 200,000 gallons of fresh water per day, six fully equipped operating rooms, a 600-bed hospital, and a power generation, and power generation services. 
As of last Friday, there are 4,172 National Guard soldiers and airmen in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and this number will continue to rise over the coming days. These personnel are assisting with distribution of emergency supplies, support to local law enforcement, restoration of communications and power, and debris clearing. Members of our own Minnesota National Guard have been deployed to both Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands to assist in the restoration of essential communications to the island. The Air Force has continued to provide uh, consistent C, uh, C-17 and C-130 flights to Puerto Rico um, and the Virgin Islands, delivering much needed emergency supplies, equipment, and personnel. These are just a few of the emergency relief actions currently being undertaken uh, by the Department of Defense, and so much more needs to be done. Uh, you can rest assured that uh, I will continue to monitor the situation closely and remain in regular contact with the uh, Department in the upcoming days. In addition to the emergency release, relief provided by the uh, Pentagon, Congress must not fail to act. The hurricane, when Hurricane Harvey and Irma devastated portions of Texas and Florida, Congress acted swiftly to provide emergency funding to assist the affected areas. Now Congress must do the same for, the, for our fellow citizens in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I am in D.C. today, where I will, be, will continue to push for additional emergency aid uh, packages because no American should be left behind simply because they live in a territory and not a state. Thank you all for calling attention to this crisis, and we'll, um, it will, will be a long process of rebuilding. My thoughts and prayers are with our fellow citizens of the affected areas. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. My name is Ayana Sor Machado, and we're here. Everyone standing behind um, behind me is a part of a coalition of individuals, groups, um, and organizations in Minnesota that was formed to coordinate relief efforts for Puerto Rico. Coalición de Boricuas in Minnesota. Just to let you know, Boricua is um, the original word for the people of the island of um, Puerto Rico, Borinquen, um, of the Taino people, our ancestors. Um, we are Boricuas. We are here supporting um, all efforts. Um, for more information about the coalition, please contact Soraya de Adon Lopez at Boricuas in Minnesota at gmail.com. That is B O R I C U A S E N M I N N E S O T A at gmail. Uh, currently, we have a Delta humanitarian flight that is committed to taking uh, supplies in. This is our first effort um, being organized by many of us, including myself, Anastasia Belladona, Tamara Ramirez, and many, many community members of all over the Twin Cities, including non-Boriguas that have been committed to this work. Everyone standing behind you, and we expect those that are also here listening you are also joining us in this as well and committing to this work by just standing here with us. So we thank you for being here. We thank you for your support. Currently, again, just to really reiterate and stress the dire need that is out there in, the, in our islands. 17 municipalities have still not been contacted and communicated with by the governor, by the government of Puerto Rico. Um, many people are in need. They don't have water, they don't have food. And so that's what we are getting. You can drop off supplies. We have two main hub locations, um, Indigenous Roots Cultural Arts Center at 788 East 7th Street. For more information, you can contact myself, Ayana, A-I-Y-A-N-A, -A Machado, M-A-C-H-A-D-O. My telephone number is 612-702-9054. And we also have uh, a main hub at Minneapolis at El Colegio High School. You can contact Tamara Ramirez at 651-231-6322. We are spreading the word. There are also um, many, many individual sites, people's homes that are opening, different rec centers, um, different community centers that are opening for their drives and bringing them to our main hub centers, including um, labor works in St. Paul, including uh, Apple Valley, 6703 Fork, Forkstone Road, Northfield, we're collect collecting at La Casa Hispana, New Hope at 5610 International Parkway, also have a drop-off site in Robbinsdale. Again, for more information, contact Boricuas in Minnesota, Ayana Sor Machado at 612-702-9058, Soraya Don Lopez as well. 
Uh, we also have El Fondo, El Fondo Boricua, supported by the St. Paul Foundation, led up by Maria Isa of Soto Rico, and also supported by the, um, the Mobile Jazz um, Project. And we currently have raised 55,000. So thank you for all the supports. Thank you for everyone that's getting the word out. That is going directly, 100% of those funds are going directly to organizations with partnerships that we all have identified here. Um, organizations, community members that have been vetted into the process that will get the support that is needed. Though that's for long-term relief. This is an ongoing effort. This is not going to end in two weeks, two months, even a year. We need to support. We need to continue this. We need to maintain our energy in this. We need maintenance of your commitments in this work as well. So we thank you for the immediate relief that's happening. Again, we are leaving out this week with a Delta humanitarian flight. It's our first main effort of getting supplies there. We have a team ready on the ground in Puerto Rico to distribute to some of the most needed areas. And we have commitment. We are in partnership with Centro Operaciones de Puerto Rico on the island. Again, if you want to make a monetary donation, go to El Fondo Boricua of the St. Paul Foundation. Maria Isa, you willing to give your number as well? I just want to make a correction uh, that Twin Cities Mobile Jazz is not presented with El Fondo Boricua. El Fondo Boricua is a, is a fund of the St. Paul Foundations founded by my mother, Elsa Vega Perez. Uh, we are taking funds that will be distributed through the St. Paul Foundations. We've raised over, I want to say, $56,000. And um, by, you can find information by just going to give mn.org give mn.org i can be reached at puerto ricans in minnesota all spelled out at gmail.com puerto ricans in minnesota at gmail.com we thank you minnesota for your efforts mi gente did i forget anything anything else needs to be said thank you for your commitment thank you we want to close out um somo boricua and we still celebrate and we still honor our ancestors and we still honor the energy that is here and it will not be right if we don't end. Um, so we welcome you um, and honoring nuestra isla, Puerto Rico, Borinquen. And right before that, if there's any questions, we'll take them quickly at this time. No, you're fine. <laughs> U.S. history. Are you concerned that media attention, national attention, is going to shift from Puerto Rico now to Vegas? I would say it's your job to bring the real uh, news to the American people, and America's hurting at many different levels, so we need to continue to make awareness of what's happening in Las Vegas, what's happening in Florida and Texas, what's happening in Puerto Rico, so I don't think we're competing for media. These are all tragedies, and we need to maintain the awareness in the public eye of how we can help our, our fellow Americans. Um, Dr. Phil mentioned how uh, upset he was about President Trump's tweets over the weekend. Personally, were you offended as well? I would say I, well, it's not helpful. It's not helpful for our uh, leader of our country, of our free nation, to uh, say anything but a, a swift response and, and, a, and a positive message for, for America. Uh, but we need his aid, we need his leadership, and we're clamoring and gathering here today in Minnesota, in Boston, we have another press conference, and in D.C. at 2 o'clock today with over 45 organizations who are going to be asking our president to do more for us because we need his leadership. So I don't think his tweets were helpful because we need his leadership, and we're asking it to actually come into fruition. It took five days to hear from my family, six days to actually hear their voice. I have a grandmother, as some of you know, who is uh, needing oxygen, and I hope that today a uh, package that I sent through Federal Express uh, will get there and help her. But uh, my family is, is some of the lucky ones. There's people who we have not heard from. There's families, like Representative Mariani said, who live in the rural parts of Puerto Rico. I grew up there. I understand how difficult it is to get to those remote areas. Some of the mayors have not been able to have established contact with the local uh, relief efforts. Um, 
my mayor in Aguadilla, the northwest side, was on the news um, just this last weekend, and I've never imagined that my hometown, which has the largest runway in the entire uh, island, to be left without aid, uh, with people hungry, with people without water, when there is literally the largest runway in an airport in that home, in my hometown. Uh, this is a, a disaster uh, from logistical standpoints, but some of those logistical standpoint, um, issues are, are man-made and can be overcome. And that is what we're asking for today, to look beyond the red tape, to lift some of those uh, barriers and come together to save lives. People's lives are at risk. The hospital in my hometown is near collapse. Literally, they've had to close it. Um, this is in the local media in Puerto Rico in Spanish. You probably haven't heard this in the national media. They've had to close it because of infestation, because they have no water, no power. They don't have gas to run uh, their generators. And people are going to die if we don't get to them. Maybe not directly uh, a number or statistics out of the hurricane, but the aftermath and the lack of relief getting to where it needs to go swiftly, promptly, and, and in full force. And that is what we're here today to say we can do more. We can't wait for the federal government to ask uh, act. We have to do more at the local level. We have to do more at the state level. And that is why we're here today asking our Congress uh, delegation, our congressional delegation, our neighbors um, from uh, all walks of life in Minnesota, our private sector is another part where we're asking asking for them to step up, and some of them have. Some, some of them are waiting. We can't wait any longer. We need them to step up. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.